So I've taken out this loan and I remember thinking, should I tithe on the loan? And a friend said, it's borrowed money, so you don't have to. I said, okay, let me ask no more questions because <laughs> that's a lot of money to tithe. Can you imagine? So anyway, that year I had spent it chasing money. So I was doing all these things in my business to try and hit this goal, this financial milestone. And by the end of the year, <laughs> I had not achieved anything near what I desired, despite grinding, despite hustling, despite investing. It didn't materialize into results that I was happy with. I remember sitting in my office and I was budgeting and I was down to the last 5K of this loan that I had taken out. And by the time I looked at all of my upcoming expenses, that 5K was gone. And I started thinking, how did I spend this money? I started just reflecting and just thinking about it. And I was just like, I don't really understand how I'm down to the last 5K and I still have not seen a return on my investment. I still haven't hit the financial goals that I desired to have hit by now. I still haven't achieved what I wanted to achieve, but I'm down to my last 5K. I said, no, nah, I have to use this 5K and it needs to produce a hundredfold. <laughs> like I need to be so wise and meticulous about how I spend this last 5K. So I'm in my office and I literally hear, literally? I won't say literally because it wasn't audible, but for me, it's like a voice within my spirit. And I heard it say, or should I say, I heard Holy Spirit say, give away your last 5K. And I said, huh? <laughs> Party. And I just tried to shrug the, what I had concluded, concluded was a crazy thought. I tried to shrug it away, but I heard it again, give away your last 5k and I remember I sat there at my desk I was looking at the ceiling then I looked down at this budget I had just done telling me I need this 5k to get through this month look back up at the ceiling and I said but how this doesn't make any sense this is illogical <laughs> this is illogical and so I parked it and I said, I'm not going to think about this anymore. I'm going to get on with the rest of my day. So next morning comes. And even though I had parked this instruction, it played on my mind throughout the whole night. And so I've woken up the next morning and I feel heavy. And it's like, I know what I need to do. I know. <laughs> I need to listen to the instruction from the Holy Spirit and I need to give away this last 5k and I remember walking down my stairs and I was about to start my day but I couldn't start my day until I had addressed this and I sat on my stairs and I said hmm, God is telling me to give away this last 5k my expenses for the next month are 5k and if I give away this money, I don't know how I'm going to cover these expenses. But then I also remembered that God has never left me, you know, hungry. He's never left me in a position where I have been unable to take care of my financial responsibilities. Never. And I sat there and I decided to read Malachi 3.10. All right. Normally I hear Malachi 3.10 in church and I mean it goes over my head, <laughs> right? That's not to say that I don't tithe, I tithe, but when it comes to that part of the service, it's like I'm used to hearing Malachi 3.10. And so I'd never really deeped it because I'd become so familiar with hearing it on a weekly basis. And so I turn to Malachi 3.10 and I read it for myself. Malachi 3.10 Bring all the tithes into the storehouse so there will be enough food in my temple. If you do, says the Lord of heaven's armies, I will open the windows of heaven for you. I will pour out a blessing so great you won't have enough room to take it in. Try it. Put me to the test. I said, oh. So I should test you, Lord. Hmm? 
<laughs> you want me to test you? I was like, oh, but I don't want to test you, Lord. <laughs> I'm very happy to keep this 5K and pay off my expenses for this month and make sure that I really yield a return on investment from this loan I've taken out. I don't need to test you. But I read the scripture and after sitting down on the staircase for a few minutes longer, a hundred thoughts were running through my head, but ultimately this was the thought that kept on playing in my mind. I kept on saying, if I really truly trust God, right? If I really truly have faith and I call myself a Christian and I believe that this Bible is the truth and it is the word of God and my God is who he says he is and who I proclaim him to be. If I really and truly believe, then I have to be able to back that up <laughs> and follow this instruction. I have to believe that if I give away this money that he's going to provide. He's going to do what he said he will do in Malachi 3.10. Because if I'm unable to give away this money, then it means I don't truly believe. It means that I do not wholeheartedly trust God when he tells me something. I don't trust his promises. I don't trust his word. I don't trust that he's able to do exceedingly abundantly. I don't trust that he's able to take care of me. Can I live my life knowing that's how I really, truly feel? And I realized that I couldn't. I couldn't live my life and I couldn't carry on as a believer if deep down I knew that I didn't trust God enough to give away what felt like a large amount of money, especially if he told me to. And so it was in that moment that I said, you know what, okay, cool, let's do this. <laughs> I said, let's do this. Let's give this 5K away. I said, Lord, where do you want me to put it? Where do you want me to put this 5K? Who do you want me to give this money to? And I didn't bother hesitating. As soon as he told me where to distribute the money, I did so. Normally I would have procrastinated and maybe done it in the evening because I'm still trying to, you know, gather up the strength to actually do it. But I said, no, 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 no. We're going to do this and we're going to do this right now, this very morning so that I can get on with the rest of my day. And so I went ahead. Money left my account. And I said, that's it. It's all on you, God, now. I, I, I listened. I've done my part. How you're going to see me through this month is all on you. Now, the moment that I gave that money away, I felt free. I felt good. I felt happy knowing that I had put my trust in God. I wasn't anxious. I wasn't worried. I literally just felt so good that I put my trust in him. I can't describe the feeling, but I was just able to continue with the rest of my day, smiling, knowing that I had put my faith and my everything in my God. Now, me being an impatient human being, I expected to see Malachi 3.10 <laughs> manifest itself immediately. Right, I was expecting to see a harvest from my seed and from my obedience that year. And in fact, I was expecting to see it take place on Black Friday. So I think this had happened in um, October, Black Friday's in November. And so I remember Black Friday coming up and I thought, oh my gosh, yeah, Black Friday is gonna be crazy. Black Friday, I'm gonna do 100K in sales in one day. And I know I'm gonna do it because I gave away the 5K. I didn't do 100K in one day on Black Friday. I did about a tenth 
of that, so 10k. And I remember sitting there thinking, okay, so this year is not the year of the harvest. And I actually remember sitting there being, can you believe it, ungrateful. Can you imagine being ungrateful? I had a lot of work to do. But I'm actually so grateful that I didn't achieve, you know, the 100k that I had been hoping to achieve that year because at that time I still did not have a revelation on stewardship. Um, my financial management was horrid. And had I hit that milestone, I would have gone out and got a G-Wagon, right? I wouldn't have cared about the difference between revenue, right? Gross profit and net profit. I would have just said, 100K, let me go get my G-Wagon right now. I promise you, that's what I would have done. <laughs> and so I remember hearing that sometimes delay is not delay, it's development, right? When you don't receive what you're asking for, sometimes that's just God developing you so that you're ready to receive what it is that you've asked for and what he wants for you to have. So anyway, the year comes to an end and it had been a year that I had been chasing money and I didn't catch the money that I was chasing. So I decided that instead of chasing money, I was going to chase purpose. And I asked God, what is my purpose? What do you want me to do this year? And he showed me my purpose and it had nothing to do with what I had expected. It had nothing to do with my business. It had nothing to do with St. Clair's hair. It had nothing to do with my marriage, nothing to do with my children. In fact, it had everything to do with other people's children. He had told me to create an entrepreneurship program for young people, showing them how to do business from the lens of their, their God-given purpose. And I've shared this story before, so I'm not going to go into it now, but you can check out the video. But I was obedient and I carried out this program, even though it made no sense to me whatsoever. And I didn't have the resources and I didn't feel qualified, but I carried out this program. And then once the program was finished, we were now approaching Black Friday. And so somebody who I had reached out to, to be a part of the program, why am I saying somebody? They gave me the authority to declare their name. And so I had reached out to Yao from Averestel to be a part of the program, right? And to come and speak to the young people about entrepreneurship. And at that time, I didn't really know him that well. I only met him once and I just thought, let me give it a shot. Let me ask him if he's willing to speak to the young people. And he did. And then that day we got to talking. And so once the program had finished and I was back in, you know, business mode, wearing my business hat. I remember towards Black Friday, Yao hits me up. And long story short, he tells me that he wants to give me 5K to put into my ad spend. He doesn't want me to pay him back. There's no strings attached. He just feels like it's going to help me. It's gonna do a lot for my business. And I was like, wow look at God, right? Because if I hadn't stepped out in faith and put God's business before my business, right? God's business being this entrepreneurship program for young people. If I hadn't made that a priority and actually followed through, then I wouldn't have met Yao and been able to, you know, even be on his radar for him to consider me for such a thing. But because I put God's business before my business look at what has happened and then i thought about the 5k that god had asked me to give away the year before literally a year from a year from when yao hit me up is when god asked me to seed and to give away that 5k and now it's come back to me but it didn't just come back to me as 5k because I put that money into ad spend and Black Friday, I did 33K in sales. And I share this story, not to focus on the results of being obedient and giving away that money and, you know, um, how, it, how it led to me, you know, having a phenomenal Black Friday. That's not why I share this story. I share this story to shed light on the the journey and the process that I had to go through 
in order to have enough faith to listen to the instruction before I knew what was going to come from it. I mean, I've heard stories where people say, I gave away everything in my savings account. I emptied it out in faith. And I'm just like, but how? I don't get it. <laughs> like, how were you actually, how were you able to do that? And for me, I believe it's one, because you know, you believe that God told you to do so. Sometimes we can get into a habit of just giving routinely or not giving from the heart or just giving so that we can honor the principle of tithing and offering. And there are times when God wants us to go beyond that, but it doesn't make logical sense. It's not practical, right? So then how, how do you do it? And for me, I believe that I was able to do so because one, God told me to, right? I truly believe that the instruction to give away that money came from God and nobody else. And secondly, I was able to do so because of faith, because I had faith that God would come through. I decided that I was gonna use my faith, that I was gonna give that money away in faith. And it's crazy because even though I've been through that experience, it doesn't mean that I still don't struggle when it comes to giving money away, when it comes to offerings. It's a constant battle. But because I've had this experience, I know not through hearsay, not through somebody else's, you know, story, but I know from my own personal experience that God is gonna come through. I don't wanna be the person who forgets what God has done. So it means whenever I find myself maybe struggling to give or struggling because things look a bit peak financially, I'm able to say, God comes through. He's come through before. I know personally firsthand that he is a provider. So remember that and don't forget that. It's so important to keep your eyes on him because it's very easy to get distracted and to forget what he has done and then begin to move and behave and make decisions according to our logic. But yeah, so I hope this video has blessed you. I hope it's given you insight on how to find the courage, the confidence, and to have the faith to lean on God, to trust him with everything, including your finances.